Good morning, everyone. All of you know that we were discussing the literary terms from the book A Glossary of Literary Terms by M. H. Abrams and Geoffrey Colt Halfon. So today's topic will be act and scene in drama. Okay, let's get started with that. <clears throat> First of all, we must know what act is. An act is a major division in the action of a play. It is a major division in an action of a play that is the play is divided into acts in england this division was introduced by the elizabethan dramatist who were also known as the shakespeareans also known as the 16th century dramatist okay they include william shakespeare ben johnson christopher marlowe Thomas Kidd and other university wits and many others. Okay, they imitated the structure of ancient Roman plays having five acts. That is during the Elizabethan plays, during the Elizabethan age, the, the plays were consist of five acts. Late in 19th century, a group of dramatists started to follow Anton Chekhov and Henrik Ibsen by constructing four act plays. That is, it is reduced to four acts for what initially was five act. Okay, I think you know who Anton Chekhov was and who Henrik Ibsen was. Sorry, Henrik Ibsen was. Anton Chekhov was a russian playwright whose one of the most celebrated works was the cherry orchard i think you have gone through that particular work if not please try to read it and henrik ibsen he was a playwright from norway and one of his most important works was a doll's house the most important try to remember that and in nine and in twentieth century, it reduced to three acts only. Now see, during sixteenth century, five acts in a play. During nineteenth century, four acts in a play. During twentieth century, is it reduced to three acts only. Some of them were of two acts also. As an example, uh, waiting for Godot, which we discussed yesterday. Waiting for Godot, who wrote this? It is uh, an absurd play consisting of two acts only, written by Samuel Beckett. Okay, the both both the acts were identical in nature. So we can see that the the number of acts are reducing day by day as the people. Uh, does not have or do not have time they are trying to reduce everything okay 16th century 5x 19th century 4x 20th century and now 3 and 2x only so let's uh, understand the structure of 5x during the elizabethan era or the roman era so in the first act, the play is introduced. That is the exposition of the play. The audience are introduced with the characters of the play, the story of the play, the background of the play. This is the first act. In the second act, the action gradually arises. And in act three, the climax Occurs that is the peak point of the play comes at the act three and act four is the falling action that is the action is gradually falling down from fourth act onwards okay and in the fifth act we can see the denouement or the conclusion that is the revolution of everything could be seen in the act five so it was this this pyramidal structure was given 
by one of the most important critics of drama, uh, Freytag. His full name was Gustav Freytag. He was uh, a 19th century German novelist and playwright, also a critic. Okay, so I think you have understood the structure of uh, act in a play. What act is? Act is a part of a drama or a play. Okay, so along with the act, we must also understand the scene. As the scenes are, scenes are components of an act. First of all, you have to remember that act is the greater component of the drama or the play and scene is the smaller component or the uh, relatively or comparatively smaller component of a drama. A scene, sorry, an act is composed of or subdivided into many scenes. That is, scene is a sequence of continuous action in a play, fiction, opera, or a book in a single location and a continuous time. I think you are getting my point. In a play, the end of a scene is usually indicated by dropped curtain or a dimming of the light. Okay, it is a temporary uh, pause in a drama or a play. Whereas the end of an act is indicated by dropped curtain and an intermission. Okay, longer break is taken after an act. But after a scene, the break is not taken. Just a temporary, a transitory break is taken. Okay. In film, scene is a series of shots taken in a single location and a continuous time. That is, to become a scene, the location should not be scenes. The time should also be a continuous time. There should not be any kind of pause in between. Okay, so act is a greater component of drama and scene is a smaller component of drama. Okay, and a drama consists of acts and act consists of scenes. I think you have understood my point. Okay, for today, uh, this much only. We will try to understand some other important literary terms in our upcoming classes. Till then, thank you.